Hi guys, I know that we have covered immunity and inflammation in essential body. Uh, there are a few things though for um, clinical support that I just wanted to add to that information. So I'm going to skip through in the slideshow that you have posted on uh, Blackboard. There are more slides than we will spend time on. So I'm just going to quickly go through the first group of slides because that is just a review for you from uh, Essential Body. And then we'll I'll deal with the uh, possibly new information further on. There are also some um, YouTube videos on Blackboard in the weekly learning that you can refer to and uh, that might help you understand immunity and inflammation. Um, first, firstly, we will be uh, looking at some terminology that you've probably been hearing. We've talked about it in class um, all along from the very beginning. Many of these terms have been used. There is a Quizlet that um, will help you remember the definitions. So please feel free to practice on Quizlet. Our immune system, we've talked about it, as I said, in essential body and its purpose. So it's pretty self-explanatory what all of the components are of the immune system, where they're found in the, in the body. We're going to spend a little bit of time on the hormones, um, complement system antibodies and white blood cells because those are the ones that actually create uh, inflammation. Um, the thymus we've talked about, the spleen, our lymph nodes, bone marrow, white blood cells in general. This is just an uh, example of a white blood cell phagocyte with cytosine, a yeast cell. So it's the little um, pseudopods, sort of part of the cell membrane, just wraps itself around the foreign product and then takes it inside where it's then engulfed. So the other components of the immune system, we have talked about antibodies. These are produced by the white blood cells. Um, the complement system, which is what we call a non-specific defense, and hormones that help promote the maturation of our T lymphocytes. There are three possible responses from our immune system. The first one uh, is non-specific, which we've talked about, the first and second lines of defense. The third one is a specific um, response to a specific antigen, and that is our third line of defense. And the third one is um, a hypersensitivity, which is an allergic reaction, and it involves the uh, production of um, a response that is more exaggerated than should be. So we'll look at those a little bit. So we've looked at the nonspecific uh, lines of defense, our skin, mucous membranes, chemicals, and reflexes. All right, so I'm just going to skip through some of these. These two courses kind of cross over each other. I'm just going to go back to the mucous membrane or the skin. Uh, we'll be talking about the Langerhans cells in um, the essential body this week. Um, chemicals, reflexes. Our second line of defense is our phagocytosis and the production of interferons and complement proteins, inflammation, and fever. So phagocytosis, I've explained and described. Um, proteins, now this is an area that we haven't talked about much, and there are, these are protective proteins, and there are two groups of them. They act in a non-specific way to protect the body. The first one are called interferons. These are a group, a group of proteins secreted by cells that are infected by a virus. What they'll do is diffuse to surrounding cells where they will prevent the virus from connecting and preventing it from replicating. So they interfere with viral replication. 
they also, these interferons will also activate our natural killer cells and our macrophages. The second type of protein is a complement protein. These circulate in the blood in their inactive form, but they become activated against bacteria and then they will swarm it. Then they attach to the bacteria outer membrane and punch holes in it. This allows fluids and electrolytes to flow into the bacteria, causing it to burst and die. These also enhance phagocytosis and the inflammatory response. So inflammation, we've, uh, as I said, there are a couple of videos that will go over this and with some good um, visual assistance that might help clear things up. Basically, the purpose of inflammation, though, um, it's a series of coordinated events that are designed to help neutralize, destroy, isolate, and remove the injurious agents from the tissue. So how does it do that? Well, it brings phagocytic cells to the area, those cells that are capable of phagocytosing, such are, as our polymorphonucleocytes, our macrophages, and our histiocytes. These cells will all are capable of engulfing and digesting the bacteria, dead cells, or debris. They also, the job is to clean out the necrotic debris by neutralizing and diluting the irritant through edema. Edema is another word for swelling. And the third purpose of inflammation is to initiate tissue repair by bringing antibodies to the area. Um, through the escape of fluid and plasma proteins into the tissue, and that helps to limit the spread of the infection by forming a product called fibrin, or granulation tissue. This initiates the repair of tissue. So inflammation and repair are intertwined. Fibrin is an, a fibrous, insoluble protein derived from fibrinogen. And it's through the action of thrombin, which is the basic component of a blood clot. So when there's a blood clot, we've got lots of fibrinogen. Basically, whenever a cell or tissue is injured or destroyed, regardless of how it is injured, it releases a chemical substance called a chemical mediator, which sets into motion the process of inflammation which is the pro physiological response of the body to injury, and it's the body's way of defending itself. As long as there is an irritant, there will be an inflammatory reaction. It can be a local reaction to limited to the location of the irritant, or it can be systemic through the whole body. It can be acute, which refers to a response that is abrupt in onset and short duration to chronic which occur is the term we use if the acute persists for more than a few days. These are the cardinal signs of inflammation. We have heat. That's because of an increase in blood flow because of vasodilation. Redness, for the same reason. Swelling, because there is uh, vascular permeability, the blood vessels allow fluids to get into the area, um, as well as plasma proteins and white blood cells. They all come into that area, causing a bit of a traffic jam. Pain, that's a, as a result of both the uh, edema and um, applying pressure to the nerve endings in the area, causing uh, the release of pain-producing inflammatory um, agents. And the very last um, sign of inflammation is loss of function and that is the result of swelling and pain. You can't use that part. It, it hurts when you move that part of your body that is injured. We've talked a little bit about pyrexia or fever. Pyrexia is an abnormal elevation in body temperature. As the phagocytes perform their duty, they release fever producing substances called pyrogens. That is the Latin word for fire. Now we'll talk a little bit about the hypothalamus um, and in essential body, but basically that's the 
control center for the body's uh, temperature. The pyrogens will actually stimulate phagocytosis and it decrease, decreases the ability of certain pathogens to multiply. So we want there to be some sort of a fever, especially in a situation where the pathogens don't like the temperature, the higher temperatures. We just don't want it to be too high. Now a specific response is the third line of defense. This is where um, we have our lymphocytes and our antibodies. We've talked a little bit about the uh, antibody antigen connection. Um, so it involves these lymphocytes, the third line of defense. All of our lymphocytes are produced in the bone marrow by blood stem cells. Some of them stay there and mature there and are then known as B lymphocytes. There are two types of B lymphocytes. One is called the plasma cell and the other are memory B cells. Other lymphocytes will migrate to the thymus and will mature there and these are called T lymphocytes. There are four types. There are killer T cells, helper T cells, suppressor T cells, and memory T cells. Here's an example of invading bacteria, the little green fellows, that are being phagocytosed by a macrophage and when it does that it removes these little identifying markers these are the antigens and it places them on the surface of the cell on the surface of the macrophage cell meanwhile helper t cells have a complementary antigen marker on them so you can see it's like a lock and key when they find a macrophage with this marker on it, they call then on the B cells to come to proliferate and multiply. So we've now got an activated T cell that tells the B cells to proliferate. The B cells are told to start and stop making antibodies by the helper T cells and the suppressor T cells. So the helper T cells tell them to start producing antibodies to deal with this microbe and the suppressor T cells tell the um, B cells to stop. The antibodies will then bind to the bacteria and when they do that they make those bacteria ineffective and then more easily destroyed by the macrophages. So we're pretty smart. Okay, I'm just skipping ahead to hypersensitivity for the last few minutes here, um, which is an allergic reaction. It's an exaggerated response to an uh, antigen which produces tissue or host damage. It can occur on the second or subsequent exposures to the antigen and can vary from mild to life-threatening. There are four types of hypersensitivity. Type 1 anaphylactic, which is, um, occurs fairly quickly, maybe within the first few minutes, um, and it's anything from annoying um, to fatal. It can be very serious. Um, mast cells are triggered to release histamine. Type 2 is the cytotoxic reaction. Um, antibodies directed against target antigens cause this to happen. This happens like in drug reactions. Uh, Third one is immune complex reaction. It is mediated by an antigen antibody complex that um, release enzymes that can cause tissue damage. And then type four is the cell mediated delayed. And that's where the antibodies are directed against target antigens on the surface of cells or other tissue components. So it's a little delayed sensitivity. So that concludes this. Um, screencast and I hope that um, you have been able to take a few minutes to pick what you need out of it and I'll talk to you later. Have a great day.